It's Didi on the Spot. Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Kathy Seitz here on the show. She is also known as the Prepping PA on Instagram. I'll leave a link down below so everyone can go and follow her. She got her bachelor's in exercise science, and she got her master's in physician assistant studies. So basically, she is very, very smart. I would like to say that, first of all. <laughs> She's also a nationally qualified N NPC bikini competitor. Kathy, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you to adapt a more healthy and fit lifestyle? What, what was the turning point for you? Sure. So I actually grew up playing sports my entire life. Um, I was a gymnast from the age of eight all the way up until age 18. So I went all the way through high school um, as a gymnast. So health and fitness has kind of just been something that has been in my life forever. Um, my family's also pretty active. My dad is almost 65 and he's still running. So he's been a big influence um, to me in the health and fitness world as well. So health and fitness has always just kind of been second nature to me. Um, so, you know, kind of going into competition mode, that was something that I had just been used to uh, growing up as an athlete. But I knew, you know, going into college that I wanted to pursue something in the health and fitness field. I just wasn't exactly sure what. Um, so that's why I started with exercise science, and I knew I wanted to further my career. Um, so I wanted to, you know, kind of continue on, and that's when I decided to become a physician assistant. Uh, but I still continue to play sports in college. I actually played Division three softball at Mount Union for three years. I also ran track at Mount Union. Um, and then I got really into long-distance running after I graduated. So... It was just kind of something that I needed in my life. Um, I don't know what I would do without health, health and fitness or exercise in general. It's just kind of always been something that I thought was, you know, just part of living. So, you know, I got into long distance running and I did that for a long time. I did countless half marathons. I actually completed two full marathons. Wow. Uh, yeah, so health and fitness isn't new to me. But, um, you know, I do like to keep a variety, so. What position did you play in softball? I was actually, I was a center field and a leadoff hitter, so I was pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, I was a pitcher all the way through high school, so that was, that was my shtick. But when, yeah. obviously being a gymnast, I mean, you're going to, those workouts that they have for gymnastics are insane, and you're going to be in great shape. Did you find that that made made transitioning when you started like serious weightlifting did you find that, that made it so much easier already having that foundation especially with like abs and back muscles did you find it just the transition easier I wouldn't say easier I would say though that um, muscle memory did play a big role in it um, I always had broader shoulders when I was a gymnast uh, but then like I said I kind of got into running so I did a lot of cardio, obviously, and I felt like I, you know, burnt a lot of my muscle off from what I had as a gymnast. Um, but the movements itself and just kind of having that background of being a gymnast and having the flexibility, um, you know, that helped in my favor when it did come to, to weightlifting. Um, but it's a whole different level, I guess, you know, the soreness and the type of exhaustion and the way that you're pushing yourself in the gym is, is going to be different than, you know, doing press handstands on a balance beam. And it's just, you know, a different type of workout, but I do feel like it being a gymnast did benefit me just having that muscle memory in the gym. What was the most surprising thing that you learned when you were getting your bachelor's in exercise science? Is there a certain fact that really stood out to you? You were like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Um, I think I was just really uh, amazed. And what struck my interest was just the human body in general. And one of my favorite classes was kinesiology, which is just kind of the study of how the body moves and um, just having, you know, lab exams and just laboratories of seeing the cadavers and just, you know, dissecting each little muscle, um, that just, it blew my mind. And I think that's what really wanted me, made me go into, 
the physician assistant studies because uh, I actually work in general surgery now. So I see muscles, bones, mm. arteries, veins, blood, you name it, mm. every day. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I think that that course and just kind of the study of how the body moves was just so appealing to me. I, it kind of stuck with me, and that was a turning point for my career. Did you start up the serious weight training when you were getting your master's? No, so I've actually been only competing for a year come October 1st. So oh. I'm a newbie at this, actually. Okay, um, everyone, can we just say that she like, she looks that good after only less than <laughs> one year? Are you kidding me? Good yeah. God. So yeah. when you were getting your master's in f- physician assistant studies, how did that ever sort of that ever like give you any motivation to pursue a more healthy lifestyle? Because I like to tell the story. I had a guy on who was he worked in the children's hospice in some place in Mississippi, and just seeing those kids and what they went through. He he was a, he used to be a musician, and that really inspired him to you know get back into music. Did seeing some of that stuff that you see when you're being a physician, like you see some people that really got a that really got a rough hand in life, or they really just have something really bad about them. Did that sort of inspire you to say like, hey, I'm young, I'm healthy, I should really you know take care of myself. It does, and actually your second year of the PA program um, is just rotation, so you're out on the field, you're, you know, you're doing pediatrics, you're in the ER, you're in the OR, you're doing primary care, um, psych, surgery, um, you know, you're everywhere, so you see infants to geriatrics, you see sick healthy sick patients healthy patients so i think what really you know opened my eyes was my emergency medicine rotation and just seeing how sick some people really are um and it's unfortunate because a lot of times you know their lifestyle changes that can be made from a young age and yeah exactly you know i'm 29 but i was 20 Three twenty-four in PA school, but and I see all you know these these sick patients and just people losing loved ones, and it does it does inspire you to want to make a change and just kind of better yourself as well. So I've always had this question because I'm one of those people where I could never like see when when you open up someone I could never see like a boner thing. I would just be like, oh my god, I'm the kind type of guy where I'm driving by and if I see like a dead animal on the road, I just can't look. I'm just like, come on now. Or when I'm getting blood drawn, I just I can't look at it. Do you what do you think deep down? Because I've always been fascinated with people that are willing to willing and able to do that, and a lot of it's to help people. But is it just how do you have you always just thought of that as something that's interesting when you like see someone like opened up? I just never really quite got is it just something that um i know i know it's like obviously trying to be helpful but is it just something that you always found fascinating it is and my mom was a nurse well she still is a nurse uh she's been a nurse for 35 years so uh, my sister's a pharmacist so i think you know the medical field runs in my family so i've seen it um and i understand it and it does it does fascinate me and it's a very controlled environment so you know I used to work in the ER which was a less controlled environment but now that I'm working in general surgery um, you know you have sterile you have sterile drapes over the patient you have tourniquets to control blood loss Um, so it's not like the television shows that you see where you know there's blood everywhere it's it's controlled Um, things definitely do get out of hand though Uh, you have to be ready to you know perform CPR if something does go bad you have to know your your basics you know if something is hit and an artery starts bleeding um, you have to be ready for that but you know most nine times out of ten all these surgeries are controlled and um, you know it's not as gruesome I guess as you would think yeah that's what that's what I come to believe. I mean, with with movies and everything. Like I always tell bands that are on tours that the the movie industry tries to promote that like tour life is just so grand, and then in reality it's nothing like that. So I, I when movies come out, I really you know it's all for Hollywood and drama. And I've never you know fingers crossed, never been in a hospital myself or anything. My thing, so I, I would not get that. But yeah, I'm I'm gr- glad to hear because the movies sometimes make it seem like it's so bad. But what was the most surprising thing about the human body that you learned that you thought was really cool? So I do mostly orthopedic surgery. So I do a lot of total hip replacements, total knee replacements, um, a lot of fractures. Um, 
arthroscopies, trying not to get too in depth here, uh, a lot of shoulder like rotator cuff repairs, a lot of sports medicine, um, injuries, ACL repairs, a lot of podiatry fractures. Um, and I think the most, the, 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 the coolest thing on my part being a PA is I get to close every incision. So that's the first thing that the patient is obviously going to see when they wake up and then when they're in recovery is their incision. And, you know, priding yourself, you want to make it look good. And that's really like my strong suit is, you know, closing up incisions and making them look neat as if the surgery had never happened. So that is one thing that I just love about it. I think is so cool is just like knowing that patient's going to wake up, seeing that incision that you've, you know, that you had closed looks good. They're happy with it and they're satisfied. So at what point, going back now to your beginning in the health and fitness, at what point did you realize that you could compete? Was it, I mean, I know it's been less than a year, but was it really early on when you kind of just looked at yourself and said, wow, you know, I could probably do that. Or was it someone who just came up to you and said like, hey, you look amazing, you should compete? Yeah, so um, going back to like my sports career, I was running and it just kind of got to a point where it wasn't fun for me anymore. It was really burning me out. Um, you know, I almost dreaded putting my, my shoes on and going out for runs. And I almost felt like I had to go running. Like it just, I don't know. It came to a point where I was just, I was over it and I felt like I needed a change. Um, and I knew some people who had competed before and just kind of like talking to different people and getting their opinions. I really did go back and forth between actually doing a show for a solid year. Um, and then, you know, I just decided one day, I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna do this. This is totally out of my comfort zone. <laughs> like getting up on a stage in front of strangers yep. with heels and makeup and I mean, I'm in an OR every day. <laughs> I don't put makeup on, I wear a hairnet, I wear masks, like I'm covered. So something like that scared the crap out of me. And I think that's what motivated me to do it, is to just kind of prove to myself that I could do it. And then I ended up doing really well, and I fell in love with the gym and training and you know, lifting weights and doing cardio. And so I, I, I think you know, just taking that leap of faith and trusting myself was, was how I just kind of got into it. One of the big myths and stereotypes that I love to bust on here is that it still exists, but it's gotten better over the last five years, I think, with Instagram, is women still have, a majority of women are, still have that fear where if they touch one weight, they're going to all of a sudden become the rock. It's going to just magically happen. Did you have that starting out, and if so, was it sort of a process of you know overcoming it, or did you always just kind of know that, hey, that's not going to happen? Um, I think just with my exercise science and you know, education background, I knew that as a female, that's just not possible unless you're supplementing with something else. Um, so I, I never really had that fear of, you know, I'm going to get too bulky or anything like that. It's just not possible for the female gender, um, unless you're supplementing. So, so no, that never really did cross my mind. It did, you know, scare me that I wasn't going to be doing hours of running and cardio and you know I I didn't think I would miss that part of it um, but like I said I had gotten so attached to running that it was kind of hard for me to give up so much cardio and switch over to you know the weight training could you give us a flex because I was going to show people that after working out for that long this is not this is not what you're not going to become the Hulk yeah see look at that oh. you are not going to she is not the Hulk and she's been working out for that long and having such a such a steady diet and nutrition I mean, and I love, you know, it really, that's one of the big stereotypes. I mean, I, I, I remember there was a girl in college with me who had the same thing because I started really working out in college, and she was like, oh, I don't want to get, like, super bulky or whatever, and I just told her, I said, go over and lift that really, really heavy door, or it was like a door chair thing, and I was like, go lift that once, and she lifted it, and I just went, oh, my God, you're huge. You really <laughs> bulked up and taken over, and I was like, no, it's not. So then I finally, you know, got her into it more, and she lost a lot of weight, and she's forever grateful. I think it's just getting over that first step of, you know, just once you get in there, and, and plus the gym can be very intimidating, especially for women because there's always usually these big guys that usually just like to be all you know intimidating sometimes but people don't realize that most people are just focused on themselves when they're in the gym they could care less about you exactly. and it's all in their mindset so did you have a trainer to start out or did you just start out by yourself I did I had a trainer um, 
or a coach and, you know, just kind of like doing my own research. Um, I found my coach through Instagram and I had reached out and he was on board with me competing and we kind of decided on a, a show date and we just kind of took off and I was, I had made the decision that I would want to start October 1st, 2018. Like, this is when I want to start. Um, so he was, you know, very good about it. And he was on board. He let me kind of just, you know, make the decision as far as when my first show would be. And he guided me. Um, cause I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been able to do it without a coach, honestly. I, and he did my nutrition and my training, um, just because going back, you know, being in the weight room was something new to me, um, as and also the nutrition because I follow a macro-based diet and I had never counted count in macros before, um, so that was that was something to get used to for sure. You are the first person on here who's explained that they do a macro-based diet. Could you just briefly explain to the audience there what that what that really entails? Sure. So counting macros, um, your macronutrients are. The, your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats. Um, and then you have your micronutrients, which are your, your minerals, your vitamins. Um, so it's broken down into those macronutrients or macros. So, um, and you always just, it's based on numbers. And, you know, you don't really pay attention to calories so much. Um, you want to get as much nutrition in those three main macronutrients. So it's not solely based on calories. You want to make sure that the food you're eating is going to be portioned out into those three macronutrients. And that's what's really going to narrow it down and see like what you're lacking. So when you first start doing it, it's kind of an eye opener because I was very low in protein. Um, and my carbohydrates, overall, I was pretty low. So I had to start, you know, increasing my, my calories uh, quite a bit. But it's just, it's another way to kind of see where, how much you're eating of what macronutrient and just really zone in on a certain one. And it's, it's nice because it's a very flexible diet. Um, you know, you're not following a strict meal plan. If you don't like fish, you don't have to eat fish. If you want to do just chicken for your protein and, you know, choose foods that you like and it fits into your numbers, you can do that. Um, so it's a very flexible diet. It fits in with everyone's lifestyle, and I think it's I think it's really easy to follow once you get the hang of it. What was your prep like? Was it uh, how long was it, and did you struggle with it at first, or was it more easier for you based on kind of your past as in in gymnast or your past and doing a lot of cardio for cross or for cross country? What was your prep like? So for my first show, I prepped for eighteen weeks and. I think the hardest part um, was honestly being a full-time PA yes. and working 40 plus hours and still trying to uh, meal prep and fit in, you know, the gym hours and and it was honestly it was more like it was stressful just bringing my meals to work every day because. I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to be able to get out of surgery on time. Uh, meal timing was all over the place, and it still is. Um, you know, you want to be able to eat every two, three, four hours, and sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, so that is probably the hardest part that I still struggle with is just meal timing and just getting a break here and there to eat something. Um, so that was probably the biggest struggle for me and just starting off, you know, weighing out your food takes a while. Now that I've been doing it, um, you know, I can, if I'm in a really big hurry, I can eyeball, which I don't really like to do. I still like weighing out everything, even, you know, post-show. But it is, it's, a, it's time consuming when you're first starting. So you want to make sure that you have the time and competing is something that you really want to do because that's a huge part of it. I mean, looking the way that you look, you're probably going to get a lot of stares. Do you prefer when you're in when you're a PA and wearing scrubs where people can't, you know, see the way you look and stare at you? Do you prefer that, or when you go to work, do you kind of like find that like a nice release where people won't be looking at you all the time? 
Yeah, kind of. Um, I do like wearing, you know, the baggy scrubs every day. I don't have to really get ready for yeah. work. Um, I just kind of throw my scrubs on and that's it. Um, I did, you know, start losing some weight and people were asking, you know, if I'm okay. And obviously <laughs> I have these like big, huge scrubs on me. And, you know, I didn't make it really known at work. I didn't want people, I don't like the attention yeah. really much, you know, just cause then, you know, you just, now it's out there and everyone yeah. knows that I do it, but, um, but then it becomes first, like, then it becomes like more of just that where then they kind of just focus less on you and it's more of how you look. Yeah. And then they start asking you what you're eating yeah. and then they start asking you for advice and mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it snowballs, which is very flattering. It really is. And don't get me wrong. Like I would love to take on clients and help and train and do all that, but I just don't have the time. Yes. Um, just with work and everything, but yeah, I mean, it is kind of a nice release just to kind of, you know, be comfortable at work every day and not get stares, and I mean, I still get stares, yeah. but for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you were doing your first show, how did you, I mean, I know we kind of talked about it, but it is it is a scary thing to go out there on stage kind of half naked in front of everyone and just the confidence-wise. Did you really have to psych yourself up for that or was it one of those things where you're just like, I work my tail off, I'm going to go out there and do it no matter what? what. What was your process like? It was kind of a mixture of both for me. For my first show, I decided to go to Vegas wow. <laughs> where <laughs> nobody knew me. Yep. Um, I was a fresh new face to the competition world. The judges had never seen me. Um, my coach actually was not able to make it to that show. So I was kind of doing this solo and, you know, the girls didn't know who I was. Um, my family ended up coming with me. So they were, they have been like my best support system through this whole thing. But, um, so I kind of had that, um, sense of calmness knowing that you know these are complete strangers you know I'm probably never gonna see them ever again well maybe the judges but you know (laughs) like so I kind of had that going for me but it was also really scary and you know like you said you're prancing around in heels half naked in front of strangers so yeah I had to really kind of just have fun with it and it was weird. I had this like out of body feeling where this whole different person kind of came out of me when I stepped on that stage. It, and it was just like, I kind of blanked out. Um, but I just had so much fun doing it. And I just remember walking off like, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. Like I can get last place and I will be so okay with that because I just had so much fun. And just meeting people like I thought, okay, I'm going to be backstage with a bunch of girls and they're not going to know who I am and they're going to be mean to me. (laughs) But it was the complete opposite. And I met some of the coolest girls, which I still keep in touch with. And everyone was just so nice and helpful. And, you know, at that point, it just becomes fun. And I just kind of felt in my own little world. And you feel at home because all these girls and guys bust their butts. So... You know, you feel like you're in your own little community, and it's a good feeling because, you know, most of the time you do feel alone during a prep, and people aren't going to understand it. Um, So show day for me is so much fun. I love it. So obviously people don't tend to realize the fit community, but it is such a a tight-knit community. I mean, even if you look at anyone's Instagram posts in the fitness community, I mean, yours included, there's such a positive feedback for them, and they're really so close together when it comes to complimenting each other and making each other feel good. How important does that play for you when you're in prep and you're in sort of the dog days of prep where you're just tired, everyone has their zombie days, I still have them, I have mine too, and I don't even go nearly as good as you guys go. But when you just really don't want to work out, does that really help inspire you when you get all that positive feedback it does and you're definitely going to have those days where you're low energy you don't want to go to the gym but those are the days that matter the most and those are the days that it's going to make or break first or second place sometimes um so yeah it really is inspiring just like you know having people reach out to you and just cheering you on because they're out there and i i would say I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from my Instagram and I think it's just because I'm real and I'm honest and um, you know I don't tend to sugarcoat stuff so 
you know, you're you're gonna have really bad days, but the good days um, are definitely gonna outweigh them. And there's more good days than bad days. Trust me. I mean, it's it's just gonna be worth it. And when you look at it in the big picture, those tough days, you know, you're gonna remember them, and you're gonna be glad that you pushed through, and you're gonna be glad that you have people to reach out to. So you're not alone in this yeah. you, you may feel alone but there's people out there who you can reach out to and you want to hold on to those people absolutely it's just it's all about that communication and just you know helping each other out what was yeah. your what was your what is your go-to meal after a show oh a burger yes. with bacon a fried egg and sweet potato fries oh i'm dro- <laughs> i'm drooling right now that sounds so yeah good. is there any oh. specific is there any specific place that you love to go to to get it um, Red Robin is always a favorite, yes. mm-hmm. Absolutely. but anywhere that serves sweet potato fries, I can make something work. When you were, I always ask this question too, when you were starting out, did you find that because you already had that foundation of running a lot and your gymnastics and everything else, did you find that you didn't get, I love to talk about the beginner gains with people because it's such an un, under, people don't like to talk about it where I'm just going to explain for the audience if you, when you start working out, your body is going to adjust a lot quicker and it's going to get better results faster because it's it's not used to doing this, but then when your body gets used to it, it's the results are going to slow down. You're still going to get results, but not nearly as quick as you did. Having that already super physical background, did you feel that you didn't get as much results early on as maybe someone who had just started working out and had like no physical background? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it would like benefited me to have that because I actually, I weigh less now with more muscle than I did when I was really skinny and just, I don't know, like as a runner, you don't really have much muscle mass. Yeah. Um, so, but I was, you know, like five or six pounds heavier running, and I think it just comes down to a balance of, you know, if you're in prep, obviously your cardio is going to be a little bit higher, your macros are going to be a little bit lower, um, but in the beginning, you know, it it wasn't too bad. I was still trying to put, I was trying to put on muscle, so my food was actually pretty high. Um, and my cardio wasn't too bad. And I think that just did come from my running background. Um, it's not hard for me to get lean and stay lean, which benefits me. I think that, you know, the running and the gymnastics background helps me in that sense. And also genetics play a big role in that. Um, my dad is, you know, six, three is tall, skinny dude. So, um, you know, definitely genetics plays a huge role in, in body type. But I still have to, you know, I push myself every day at the gym, and I'm just trying to put on more muscle now. Uh, This is actually my first off-season or improvement season or whatever you want to call it. So I'm back to lifting heavy and, you know, going till failure and doing drop sets, and I'm so sore. (laughs) But (laughs) it's a completely different feeling, and, you know, going back to that type of training feels good again. Um, You know, my food's creeping up each week, and... You know, you just have a little bit more energy each day and you're pushing through. When you were starting out, one of the things that I love to tell tell the audience too is that most people don't realize when you are gaining muscle, you are probably going to eat more than you had eaten even before if you are overweight or even if you weighed more before, you're going to be eating more and losing, losing weight. Was that a difficult adjustment to you realizing that, hey, I'm going to actually need to eat more than I'm already eating? Yeah. Um, and like I said, like when you first start out trying to learn – a macro diet uh, and seeing like where you're deficient and seeing what you have to reach that jump can definitely be you know psychological and just knowing that oh my gosh I have to eat all this food and I'm losing weight and you know it's 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 weird how the human body works Um, but I think that goes back to having a coach and just really trusting in your coach and going with the plan because you're not going to know everything, and if you think you do, then that's probably going to, you know, hinder your performance. Then and, good luck to you, yeah. And, yeah, and your progress, and you just kind of really have to trust your coach and do your research and make sure that your coach is, you know, giving you the, the correct information um, as far as, you know, what the plan is and why we're doing this, and if, you know, you can't get those explanations, then you might want to, you know, 
go elsewhere and find somebody else that can explain that to you. Yeah. And the biggest question that I usually like to ask, and you're, you're going through it right now, is when you're done with a show, obviously people don't realize when you go to a show, you've manipulated your body through the, the dieting and the working out, and you're not going to look like this forever. Like the lean look that you have on stage, it, it's going to last for uh, maybe like a week or so afterwards. I mean, it, it, it's still looking like it's lasting for you, but wh- how do you convince your body or how do you mentally prepare for the fact or tell yourself that like, hey, I'm not going to look this good forever, that all of this prep, like I am going to regain weight. Has it been a struggle for you now that it's slowly starting to, to come because you've been like like three weeks post show and how, yeah. how are you planning on dealing with that yeah so I started October 1st so I prepped for 45 weeks and I did six shows um, so it was a long time of dieting and and working out in gym so this is actually my first reversed reverse diet experience and um, I had a long talk with my coach and I explained to him what my goals were and I do I do want to take it slow and steady. Like I'm, I worked way too hard to get to this point. I don't want to, you know, just put on a ton of body fat all at one time. And, you know, I do want to take this slow and steady because I want to do my reverse just as hard and just as dedicated as I did my prep. I mean, I put 45 weeks of hard work. I'm not going to just let that go in my reverse diet. So, uh, we're taking things slow. And that's what I want. And then my coach is on board with that. At this point, I do have to put some muscle on my upper body. Um, but, you know, I don't really have to put on a bunch of weight to do that. There's there's still ways that you can put on muscle, stay lean, maybe not stage lean, but you can still stay lean and build muscle. Um, so we're just taking it slow and we're just kind of incorporating more calories each week. Nothing crazy, nothing, you know, my intake is not going up dramatically each week um so you know it's just kind of having that that conversation with your coach too and making sure you're on the same page with your reverse and you know i'm not i'm not one to crave foods Mm -hmm. like i feel like i like what i eat and i crave the foods that i've been eating like my entire prep so I don't feel bad that I'm still weighing out everything and bringing all my meals um, to work and you know just having my own food and that's just I think the kind of person I am you know I like to be on point and I want to do this the correct way because come time prep again it's gonna be that much easier I'm not gonna have to do hours and hours of cardio to get the body fat off and it's just going to make my life so much easier to just do the reverse diet efficiently and, you know, stick to what my coach has planned um, from the get-go. What was it like the first time that you put that tan on? And people always talk about how their muscles usually pop out and then they realize they had muscles that they never had. Was that just an eye-opening experience for you? Yeah, it really is. And once you have that tan on and just, you know, the changes that you see each day during peak week, it's amazing that... You know, you can finally see the whole entire package kind of come together and, you know, you're seeing veins and muscles that you didn't think you had and it is, it's a great feeling because like you said, those bad days suck and you're going to have low energy and finally getting that tan on and just seeing it all come together on show day is like the best feeling ever. One of the things, probably the only negative thing for me that I found out when I started working out and getting a little bit bigger and stronger is that people are going to ask you to like move their furniture. They're going to ask you to open pickle jars. They're going to ask you to do all these random things. Has that been a similar experience with you, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story. Like At work now, um, like I said, I do a lot of orthopedic surgery, and we had this one case. It was a difficult case. We were fixing a a hip fracture and we ended up cracking the femur Uh, (laughs) the one surgeon I work with all the time he makes jokes because he's like he thought I did it because I was being too strong like there you go again breaking femur so it's kind of a running joke that I just break bones and I'm too strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that too. I mean, my, the summertime for me is brutal because it's always, hey, I'm moving. I need a couch that needs to be moved. You, can you come over and help us? And I'm just like, yeah. oh, my God, I can't. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
in we my- have like an obese patient, you know, and they they call for moving help. If I come in the room, they're like, "Oh, we got, we got Kathy." <laughs> Everyone's free now. Uh, yep, you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, my favorite question that I ever ask anyone that's on this show, especially the women for health and fitness, is. How is it like being with the clothing situation? Because they don't build that many clothes for women who are in really good shape. Like they don't make dress for people with broad shoulders, the, especially people with big thighs or you know calves. How have you adjusted to that, knowing that like you're not going to be able to go to like a Sears or any other place and really get a lot of the stuff that they have in there? One tip: hmm. TJ Maxx girls youth section. <laughs> That's where it's at. I shop in the little girl section. <laughs> That's how I make it work. Because, yep, you're going to you're gonna put on clothes and be like, what the heck? I look like an idiot. <laughs> or, you know, you put a dress on and you have, you know, your shoulders are popping out. And I just make it a joke that I look like a 12-year-old boy because <laughs> I just do. But, yeah, shop in the youth section at stores and you'll appreciate it because you'll save money, too. Like I, I say to every single podcast that I ask that question, if there is anyone out there in this audience that can figure out a way to incorporate some like healthy fit wear for fit girls, you will be the next billionaire. So that is an idea out there. I will, You can patent it. I will not sue you or anything like that, but just, <laughs> just throwing that out there. So now we go to our audience favorite part of the podcast, the questionnaire, where it's more of a getting to know you, where I'll ask you about a dozen or so questions, and we'll see kind of how you answer. We have some popular answers, and we'll see if you fall into that category. But for our first question, what is your go-to workout song? Oh, geez. Go-to workout song. It's weird, because I actually don't listen to music when I work out. Um, I listen to podcasts, and so... I know it sounds weird, um, but I've you know recently switched over to doing podcasts. Mm-hmm. So my favorite podcast is called Redefine Health. So that's a good one. But if I were to choose a song right now, what's that like Maroon Five song that like? Oh, we had a like, girl on like a like a week ago say that same thing, but I forgot what it was. But I totally know I what know, you're talking I can't about. Even think of it. But sometimes yeah. like anytime Maroon Five comes on, I'm like, oh yeah. I, I normally ask this to my bands, but I thought that I'd ask it for the first time for health and fitness. What is a guilty pleasure song that you enjoy that no one else would, un, would no one else would guess that you like? Oh man, <laughs> guilty pleasure song. Anything by Pink. Yep. I think just, I mean that she's not really like mm-hmm. dirty or anything, but I just I think like her music is just so like powerful, especially mm-hmm. like for women. Yep. Yeah. You are not going to believe this, but the lady that I had on literally an hour before I had you on is from L.A., and she ran into Pink at the gym once. Oh, my gosh. At, at, yeah, she was at Gold's, and Pink walked in, and then Pink, you know, complimented her on the way that she looked. And I – so that is a small, small world. So, that yeah, that is awesome. So if you could train with any celebrity on the planet, who would it be? Hmm. Any celebrity in the planet? Carrie Underwood. Oh. Yeah. She works out, man. Have you seen her legs? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, I've Can't seen I've seen on Instagram. Yeah, I've seen some of the Yeah, there are yeah. We I, I'm just surprised because out of you're like the fifteenth health and fitness person and twelve people have chosen the rock. It's like it's like almost automatic. Oh. They're like they're like the rock automatic and I'm like, okay, fine, just the rock. But yeah, Carrie Underwood, that is a that is a very, very good choice that's not a choice that i'd expect so yeah yeah, she actually she has some brutal workouts oh yeah some of those celebrities i like to give a hard time sometimes on the podcast where we talk where there's those celebrities where they'll have like two pound weights and they'll be like oh my god working hard for like this movie role and then we're like (laughs) we're like no you're not that's not the workout that you're doing you're just posting that but yeah some some celebrities really have like allison brie is another one that i follow i don't know if you follow her where she has some pretty brutal workouts herself that i highly recommend but what is the last tv show that you binge watched Oh, 13 Reasons Why, and yeah. I don't know why I watched it. I, I've heard stories. I mean, all of my friends that are females have always been, you know, talking about, oh, my God, Ryan, you need to watch it. It's such a great show. And I was like, don't eh, watch yeah, it. Yeah, you know. See, yeah. Don't watch it. Yeah. I got sucked into it, and it's just, nah. nah. No. I don't even know why I decided to watch it. I think my mm-hmm. sister told me to watch it, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> but, so I did. Yeah. But I don't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is your favorite TV show of all time? Okay, I'm a big nerd. Um, Jeopardy. 
That's really oh. embarrassing. But I Jeffy. know. I nerd out. <laughs> I, I can't help it. Well, I, just, I love I, I love watching it just because you learn a lot of stuff. But I mean, I gotta go with Friends. I just gotta be like like the most popular answer around. Everyone says Friends, yeah. but just it's it, it's Friends. Come on, I mean, what what can I mean? You right. can't you can't say anything. no. So what is yeah. what is one item that you always have in your fridge? Oh, mustard. Must ooh. <laughs> I bet that's different. Yeah, usually it's like eggs or something. And I gotta say, as a kid, my uncle used to put like mustard on everything. Like for me, like my hot dogs, even pretzels. I hate I mustard, mustard now. Everything. Yeah, I, I I hate it now. It's just because I think I had it so much. Like I'm a ketchup guy, but yeah, mustard. That's is it. Yes, what are the pro- now, yeah? What are the what are the stats on mustard? Is it, it could it is, is it healthy for you if you have it in a certain amount or is it zero zero? Yeah, you got to, I mean, there's different brands out there. I mean, most of them, they might have five calories, um, like less than one carb. But the ones that I buy are zero calories, zero everything. So mustard is like my favorite. That's, that's awesome. So if you could teach a subject in school, what would it be? Um, either kinesiology or exercise physiology. Yeah. I was going to say, we had we had one girl on who's a math teacher uh, before, and I was like, yeah, I'm not even going to ask her that question. It's already, <laughs> it's already been answered. So, That's yeah. What is one thing that people f- would find surprising if they met you in person who follow you on Instagram? Um, how – I feel like I'm a 29-year-old in a 99-year-old's body. <laughs> like, I wake up at – between 3.30 and 4 a.m. every day, oh and I'm in God. bed by, like, 8.30. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I know. I'm, like, a grandma. <laughs> so, that might be a little shocking. Um, I'm. It might not be that shocking, but I'm, like, a huge Cleveland Indians fan. I love my baseball. I love sports. I'm a Twins not guy, so you guys just won the division again. I'm, yes, I'm still salty. Did. Still Early salty about that. Yep. Yep. I, I I was rooting for them against the Cubs. I will say that last year I was. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you a Cavs? I football, so. Oh, who's your quarterback this year? Philip Rivers. Oh. He had me a good game yesterday, but I have Antonio Brown. Ooh. So I don't know what to do. I was gonna say like, just how depressing is it though to be in Cleveland during the NFL season? We almost won. <laughs> we are, that's what I that's 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 not <laughs> lose. <laughs> I just feel so bad. Like, it's just – but, like, again, I'm a huge Vikings fan, and the Vikings tied again last week – or they tied last week too, so I kind of get that. But, yeah, the Browns, it's – that takes okay. that takes, that takes takes a certain type of person to still root for them after after a while. But, I That's mean, at right. least – you got to be a diehard, yeah, man. Yeah, at least you had the Cavaliers, though, and you guys won it all. That was right. that was, that was pretty LJ. cool. But one of the questions that I also like to ask, too, is we're both from climates that can get cold during the winter, Minnesota, I, I mean, especially – how do you deal with that? Because like we say in Minnesota, you only really have to look good six months out of the year because the other six months you're going to be in a sweater anyway, so it doesn't even matter. But yeah. during the winter when it gets really, really cold, how do you still stay inspired to go to the gym when all you when your body's just basically telling you, like, let's just let's just cozy up by the fire right now and have some have some hot chocolate and watch some TV? So for me, that's actually um when I I think am the most hardworking and most motivated is in the winter because you can't be outside, so yeah. you might as well go inside a gym. Summer is actually harder for me because I I hate winter. I hate, <laughs> like, Cleveland weather. I absolutely despise it. I hate being cold. I hate the snow. I hate the ice. It's just terrible. Mm-hmm. So, like, when summer comes, I soak it up. I am trying to <laughs> be outside every weekend at the pool, doing something with the cookouts. So, like, for me, summer is actually harder to – stay in shape and get all your workouts in because I don't want to be inside. Yeah. Um, but winter for me, I feel like that's easy because mm-hmm. you're not, I don't know, you're not going to be doing anything else except just sitting inside. So you might as well be working out. That's true. I mean, I have a home gym at my, at my house. So, I mean, that's super easy for me to do. So the winter can be motivating for me as well. Yeah. But if you could have dinner with any historical figure out of all the historical figures, who would it be? Hmm. Ellen DeGeneres. 
that's a good one actually that we've had people that have said like they would want to train her and i was like no you're not gonna train ellen because she would make you laugh you would have a great ab workout but you wouldn't get anything else done she would yeah I'd be like she would be a horrible train but yeah that would be a very interesting conversation she's she's one of my favorite probably celebrities out there she's just yeah. i mean she's just so nice that you you can't hate her like she's one of those people where you no. just you, you just can't it's no. not it's not possible she does such good things and mm -hmm. positive things she's always just so kind and Absolutely. i love her what is one item that you would do anything for if it went up for auction? Ooh, good one. Um, an air fryer. <laughs> I've always wanted one. I just, I don't, I can't justify buying one for some <laughs> reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and they're really not even that expensive. I just, I don't know. I just can't justify buying one but i want one so bad <laughs> the struggle i know <laughs> so what is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time um i i'm enjoying this like high-waisted craze mm -hmm. for leggings yeah just leggings not jean shorts or jeans <laughs> but I don't know. Like I used to be so anti high waisted, but now that's like all I buy. So I'm I'm loving the high waisted leggings. And what was the second part of the question? The your least favorite fashion trend of all time. Least favorite. Um hats. I'm not a big hat person. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they can be they they can be rough sometimes. I mean, I I usually like to wear hats, especially when I just like wake up and I don't have to do my hair. But that's about the only reason that I ever use them anyway. Too yeah. personally, I don't know, my I have, I have a long head and yeah. it just doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I am I am at heart I am one of those people where I just wish for fashion trends. It's not really a fashion trend. Well, it is in my opinion, but mullets to make a comeback. I'm one of those people where it's just we gotta have we gotta have that back there. <laughs> Mullets in the jean shorts. It might. It might. <laughs> Mullets, jean shorts, and crop tops all day, every day. But yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. But, but I'd say Crocs probably are probably my least my least favorite fashion okay. trend for sure. And I think more so too, like the straight hats. Like yeah. hats are meant to be bent. Mm -hmm. It's a baseball hat. Yeah, like, like baseball hats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, well, I got to ask now, who is your favorite baseball player of all time? Omar Vizquel. Omar Vizquel. Yep. Yeah, I have an autographed baseball of him. I got it. He was at he was at a Twins game playing for the Indians, and I got him to autograph it right before. And then I got a Sammy Sosa one too. That's my other famous one. So yeah, I, I got I got nice. really lucky as a kid. Yeah, that yeah, it's unbelievable. I so Sabathia. So oh so oh okay. Well, I do too, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to say it. He <laughs> was, didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. Now. He was okay. warming up in the bullpen against the Indians, and it was so funny because this was when he was like super out of shape. So he was sweating just warming up doing his bullpen session. Then he came over and he's like, "Can, can you sign these?" So I got him to sign two baseballs, one for me and one for my brother. But yeah, he was super, That's super, awesome. super, super nice. But if you could give your give the eighteen year old version of yourself any advice, what would it be? 18 year old version. Um, I think it would just be to march to the beat of your own drum and, you know, don't, don't think about what other people think of you. If you have a dream, if you have a goal, go for it, especially go for it now. Um, when, you, when it might be a little bit too late in life. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think just really, you know, doing what you feel is best going with your heart, going with your passion and just, you know, don't try to block out the negative people. Yeah. And what is your best piece of advice that you'd have for people that are also going for their masters in physician assistant studies to, so that they don't go crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was crazy. So I would, I went straight into it after uh, I graduated undergrad and I think that was the best decision. Um, because I was already in school mode. Um, I literally walked on the stage at graduation, had one week off, and then started PA school. Um, and I think if I look back on it, if I had taken some time off and gotten a job and, you know, was making money, um, that would be appealing. And I don't, I don't think I would have gone back. So I think um, my best advice was just to do it, do it now. Yeah. And then lastly... If you could live in any other historical time period other than the one we're living in right now, what would you, where would you choose? Hmm. I guess the 80s. Yeah. I mean, I was in 89, but that's not really, you know, the early 80s. Yeah. 
yeah. I mean, yeah, after watching Stranger Things, I'm one of those people, too, where I was like, yep. Yeah. People always say, like, oh, I want to go back to the 20s or the Wild West. And I was like, no, because uh, you you die by the age of 20 from some disease. And yeah. You, you yeah. know all about that specifically. Like, you'd get just bit by right. a snake somewhere and they wouldn't have the poison. Or, like yeah. I said, or be, being me, I'd probably end up getting drafted and dying in some war by the age of 18. So right. I'm, 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 like I'm like the 80s, there yeah. was some technology and yeah. some vaccinations. And... <laughs> See, that is why I like having smart people on this podcast because they make smart answers for my questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, You're welcome. Yeah. So where can people – find you i mean on instagram obviously and if they have any exercise questions they can ask you what is out of all the people that you've had though when you're trying to convince people to adapt a more healthy lifestyle what is probably the number one excuse that you hear from people when you when you're just saying to them hey you know you can do this and maybe get healthier um the most common is definitely that they don't have time and that's and funny just, when they, that's yeah. funny as hell when they say that to you. Can I just say yeah. that? Yeah, I, I just I don't sympathize for those people, yeah. and I try, but I just can't because mm-hmm. I I make it work. I, if, absolutely. You know, and I'm on my feet all day, every day, running around, lifting heavy things, sawing bones, and you know, it's <laughs> it's not a desk job. Yeah. So I am hustling, you know, eight to ten hours a day. Ugh. And I get my workouts in, and I'm on point with my nutrition, and I try to make time for social life. <laughs> sort of, not really, but <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, time management. It just comes down to how bad do you want it, and you know how badly do you want to make a change. If it means waking up at three in the morning every day, then you better set your alarm. Yeah. Absolutely. So we got two final questions here before we wrap it up. And the first one is, if someone were to walk up to you on the street, and it's probably happened before, and say, like, oh, my God, you look amazing. I want to look like that. What would be your best piece of advice to that person in order for them to be successful in their endeavor? So just, you know, um, write out your goals. I think it's a big it, – it helps a lot when you actually see it on paper and you actually, you know, are writing out what you want to achieve. And – that way, having it in front of you um, every day and just kind of, you know, rereading what your goals are to yourself every day is a constant reminder of, you know, how badly do you want it and just kind of seeing it laid out. Start small too, you know. Don't it doesn't have to be lose 50 pounds in you know a month. Make realistic goals and start small. And lastly, if there was one thing that you could change about either bodybuilding or the fitness lifestyle, what would it be? Um, just don't take it so seriously. Um, you know, people can, can really throw themselves into a spiral, uh, if they compete or just, you know, it can get, it can get all consuming just with, you know, social media and Instagram and just seeing people every day and what they look like. And it doesn't have to be that serious. It doesn't have to be that hard. Um, you know, as long as you're doing it and you're enjoying it, then you're doing the right thing. And if you're seeing results, that's even better on top of it. And just stay in your own lane mm-hmm. and focus on yourself and just don't don't make it so complicated. Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. And, again, everyone, we cannot thank Kathy enough for coming on. It was great talking to you. And, really, if you look at her, there is no excuse that you can use for time-wise if you look at someone like her and all of the hard work that she does, being especially doing the medical stuff and then through working out and still staying in shape. I mean – is really inspiring to talk to someone like you who really just has that drive and determination that a lot of people don't have. And it's it's really appealing to, you know, just sort of get that motivation. So we can't thank you enough for coming on. And again, you guys, the Prepping PA, I'll leave the link down below to her Instagram. Is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to before we close it up here? Um, just shout out to my coach. Yeah. <laughs> who you are. <laughs> All right. Shout out to her coach. And again, you guys, Kathy, Prepping PA, we'll leave the link down below. And we can't thank you enough. And we honestly wish you nothing but the best in all of your future endeavors. Oh, and lastly, so what is when is your next show? Do you have a set date for when you're going to compete again? Or is it sort of just you're just sort of, you know, recovering now? Yeah. Well, we're going to see where I'm at. Um going to definitely take some time off uh, and just kind of reassess in a couple months and see where my, where my body's at and make a decision then. Um, nothing is set in stone, but um, hopefully early May mm-hmm. 2019. So. so everyone look out for her then. She's going she's to come. That's subject to change. Yeah. <laughs> it's subject to change, but everyone look out for her then. I mean, if she looked that good after less than a year of serious training, just imagine how she's going to look in May. So again, 
We can't thank you enough. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.